Welcome back to Unit 4. Today we're going to be continuing Unit 4 by talking about tip, tax, discount, and markup. Things that you're going to deal with every day when you go shopping. So let's go ahead and grab our calculators and get started right now. Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about discount, tax, tip, and markup as we continue our proportions and percents unit. So let's go ahead and take a look at some vocabulary terms right now. So we have four terms that we need to talk about, and we need to figure out whether we're going to be adding that to the total or subtracting that to the total. So when we talk about discount, discount is the amount of money taken off for a sale. And since we're going to be taking it off, that means that we're going to be subtracting it from whatever our total is. The tax, the tax is the amount of money paid to the government, and this is an add. We're going to add that to our bill. So whenever you buy something and you have sales tax, you're going to be paying a portion of that amount to the government, and that is called tax, and we add that to the amount. We have tip. Tip is the amount of money given for a service. So you can buy goods or you can buy services. For example, a haircut is a service. You don't actually walk out of the store with anything in your hand, but you did pay for something to happen. That is a service, and we generally add that to the bill, so that is a tip. Markup is maybe one you haven't heard of before. Markup is the amount of money added to a product by a company to cover their overhead costs and to make a profit. So when you buy something from a store like Target, Target has to charge you a little bit more than they paid for it so that they can pay their employees, that they can pay the rent on their building, that they can pay for the power in their building and the water. They have to have all of those expenses covered. And to do that, they mark up their products from what they bought them from in order to cover those things. So now let's see how we apply these things into problems finding discount, tax, tip, and markup right now. So we have two steps to find the dollar amount when we're finding ta tip, tax, discount, and markup. Step one is we're going to change the percent to a decimal. Remember, we can't multiply percents in our calculator, so they have to be decimal. So step one is to change to a decimal. And then step two is to multiply by the original amount. So once we've turned it to a decimal, we're going to multiply that to our original amount, and that will tell us how much money is in the tip, tax, discount, or markup. So let's take a look at that now in example A. So example A says Target buys DVDs from their supplier for $5 each. The store sells them with a 60% markup. What is the selling price? So notice that for my problem, I've laid out three different boxes. Now, it's very important to figure out a method for solving all of these problems. I use three boxes, but it doesn't mean that it's the only way to do these problems. So in the first box, I'm going to place the original amount. In the second box, I'm going to place whether I figured out what it is, markup, ticks, tip, tax, or discount. In this case, it's markup. And in the final box, I'll have an answer. So the original amount in this particular problem is $5. So I'm going to put $5 in the original amount box. Now, since it's talking about a markup, I know I'm going to be adding to the total. So I'm going to be putting a plus sign there. Then I need to figure out the markup. So the markup is 60%. It tells me that it's 60% in the problem. But again, I can't put 60% in my calculator. I have to turn that to a decimal. So 60% as a decimal, move my decimal two places to the left, is 0 0.60 or 0.6. Now I'm going to just do some multiplication in my calculator. I'm going to take $5 times 0.6. And when I do that, I end up with $3. So that is my markup. But it doesn't ask for what the markup is. It asks for what the selling price is. It's very, very important to read what the question is asking for. Sometimes it will just ask for the markup. Sometimes it will ask for the total price. In this case, they're asking for the total price. So I have to add the $5 plus the $3. And when I do that, I get $8. So the selling price of each DVD is $8 with the $3 to cover their employee salary, their rent, and their power and water to the building. Let's take a look now at example B. So here we are at example B, and it says Raina buys a birthday present for Amna. She finds a purse that is originally $42 and a pair of socks that are $6.50. But the entire store is having a sale for 60% off. How much is her discount? So again, I've laid out my three boxes. Those are not the only way to solve this problem, but they are the way that I'm going to use. So I have a box for my original amount, a box for my discount, and a box for my total. So first, I got to figure out what my original amount is. The problem is she's buying more than one thing. She's buying a purse for $42 and 
and she's buying a pair of socks for $6.50. So now when we go to buy more than one thing in the store, we don't run in, buy one thing, take it to the counter, then put that in our car, then go back inside the store, buy the second thing, take it to the counter, then take it to our store or to the car, then go back inside and buy the third thing. No, we take everything to the counter at once and then add those together before we pay our bills. So that's what we're going to be doing here. We're going to be taking our $42 plus the $650 for the pair of socks. So $42 plus $650. I can add that in my calculator. And when I do, I'm going to get $48.50. So that's my original amount. So I'm going to take that and place that in the original amount box. Then I know we're going to be talking about a discount. So I know that's going to be a subtraction problem. So I'm going to bring down my subtraction sign. So then to figure out my discount, I need to know what the discount is. And in this case, again, it's 60%, but I can't use that percentage. I need to turn it into a decimal. 60% as a decimal is 0 0.60. So now I'm going to multiply my 4850 times 0 0.60 in my calculator. And when I do that, I get $29.10. So now I'm going to do subtraction to figure out my total amount. However, that is not what the problem asked me to do. The problem asked how much is her discount. So I don't actually need to go any further because my answer has already been found. I found the discount, which is $29.10. Since I found my answer of $29.10, I can just put a dollar sign there, and then that is my final answer. So again, it's very careful, very important that you read the problem carefully and try and figure out what it's asking for. If it asks for just the discount, don't do extra work, just write down the discount. If it asks for the total cost, well then you're gonna have to do the extra work, but make sure that you're answering the problem. If you don't answer the problem, with what they're asking for, you won't get the problem correct, even if you do all of that extra work. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next example. Here we are at example C, and it says Jonathan buys a new skateboard for $70. It is discounted at 20% off, but he must pay 6.5% sales tax. Now this is the scenario that you will most likely run into. Anytime that you want to buy something from a store, even though it's on discount, you're still going to have to end up paying your sales tax. Now notice in this problem I laid out six boxes this time. One set of row of boxes for finding the discount and one set of boxes for figuring out what the tax is going to be. Now again, you don't have to lay the problem out this way, but I find it be very useful to lay out one set for doing the discount and one set for doing the tax. So let's start with the original amount, and in this case the original amount is $70. Since I know I'm going to be talking about a discount, I know this is going to be a minus. So I need to figure out what my discount is, and that's 20% or my decimal of 0 0.20. So I'm going to multiply by 70 times my 0 0.20 and when I do that I end up getting $14. Now again this isn't the end of my problem this is just figuring out the discount so to figure out my amount after the discount I have to do my 70 minus 14 and when I do that I get $56. So again I want to make sure that I'm going to pay tax on only the amount of money that I'm going to spend. You don't want to figure out what the tax is on $70 and pay that when you're actually buying the item for $56. So the first thing I have to do is figure out the discount. And I did that. I got $56. So now that I have my $56, I need to figure out what the tax is. So I'm going to move that down to my new amount. It's going to be a tax, so I know it's going to be adding to my bill. My tax in this case is 6.5%, and although that has a decimal in it, it is not a decimal, it is just a percent with a decimal in it. So I'm gonna move my decimal two places to the left, and when I do that, I end up with 0 0.065. Now I'm gonna be multiplying 56 times 0 0.065. When I do that, I get $3.64. So then I need to add that to my bill, and when I do that, $56 plus $3.64, my final total is $59.64. Sets. Let's take a look at example D. So example D says Noah buys the new Demi Lovato album from Target for $12. All albums are on sale for 30% off. However, when Noah gets to the register, they take an additional 15% off, most likely because he's still buying CDs. What is the final cost of the album before tax? So again, I've laid out six boxes because I'm going to be finding two things, two different discounts. Again, you don't have to lay the problem out the way that I am, but I found it to be very useful. So we're going to start with our original amount. The original amount is the $12 that he spends on the original album. So we're going to be talking about a discount I know that's going to be subtraction and my first discount is going to be 30% so I'm going to be taking 30% or my decimal of that is going to be 0 0.30 then I'm going to be multiplying my 12 times my 0 0.30 and when I do that I get three dollars and sixty cents 
So then I need to subtract 12 minus 360, and when I do that, I end up with $8.40. So now that I've figured out that my new amount is $8.40, I'm gonna bring that down, and then I have to find a discount of that. So 15% is my discount there. Gotta move my decimal two places to the left. When I do that, I get 0.15. Then I'm gonna multiply $8.40 times 0.15, and I'm gonna get $1.26. But again, this is not a second tax, this is a second discount, so I'm gonna to have to make sure that I know this is subtraction. So $8.40 minus my $1.26 is going to give me $7.14 as a final bill. Now I know what you're thinking, why can't I just add the 30% and the 15% and find it all at once? Because that would be taking 45% off of $12, and that's not the scenario that you have. The scenario you have is to get 30% off of $12, and then the remaining amount gets 15% off. It's not the same as taking 45% off of $12. It's taking 30% off of $12 and then 15% off of $8.40. So it is very, very, very important that you do not attempt to shortcut this problem by just adding the discounts together. That will not work. So you have to figure out the first discount and then figure out the second discount. You cannot just add the discounts together. Let's take a look at example E. In example E, Cole and his friends buy three hamburgers for $6.50 each. They also order three sodas that are $2.25 each. They want to leave their server a 20% tip. They give their server $40 in cash. How much change should they get back? So again, a very common scenario, you and your friends are out to eat and you would like to leave them the proper amount of tip. How much money are you going to get back? So again, they're buying three hamburgers and three sodas. They're not going to go to the register one at a time, buy one hamburger, put it on the table, buy a second hamburger, put it on the table, buy a third hamburger, put it on the table, put a soda, put it on the table, buy another soda. So they're going to be adding those things together. So since we're going to have three hamburgers, we're going to be taking those hamburgers and we're going to be multiplying the 650 times three to figure out how much each of the hamburgers are all together. So 650 times three gives me 1950. Then they're going three sodas, so three sodas at two 225, so $2.25 times three for the three sodas is $6.75. So that's how much money they're spending. So we have to add that together to get our original amount of what we're going to be finding the tip on. So $19.50 plus $6.75 is going to give me $26.25. Now, this is a tip, so I know I'm gonna be adding it to the bill, so I need to make sure that I have a plus sign there. They wanna leave a 20% tip. I can't use the percentage, though. I have to turn it to a decimal. So my 20% as a decimal is gonna be 0 0.20. So I'm gonna be multiplying 0 0.20 times 26.25, and when I do that, I end up with $5.25, 5.25. Then I'm going to add that together to get my total bill. So my total bill is going to be $31.50. However, that's not what the problem asked me to do. It doesn't say what is the total bill. It says they're gonna give their server $40 and get some money back. In order to do that, I'm gonna to have to take the $40 that they spend and subtract the $31.50 that they spent. So $40 minus the $31.50, and you can see that that left me with $8.50. So how much change did they get back? $8.50. That's my final answer. Again, very important to read the problem and figure out what it's asking you to find. If you had just written $31.50, that wouldn't have answered the question and you would have gotten the problem wrong. So it's very important to read what each of these questions are asking you because although you may be able to do the math correctly for the most part, if you don't answer the question they're asking, you don't get the problem right. That brings us to the end of this video. So if you like this video, go ahead and throw us a thumbs up. If you love this video, go ahead and throw us a sub and we will catch you in the next one.